Folks, let me start off by saying my primary area of research is actually business to business marketing strategy. That's where I've spent the last 15 years of my life building models, helping CEOs bring in customer focus and take the guesswork out of strategy. But in the last four years, I've really grown more and more interested in healthcare. Thanks to, you know, a person who's two windows down, not on the Xperbex call, but also at the Mays Business School, Len Berry, and my team at, uh, you know, at Rice, Vikas, who says that unbeknownst to himself, he's working on 20 areas, 20 papers in the area of healthcare. My doctoral students were now at Notre Dame and Iowa State. Uh, and so really, uh, the fulcrum of all of this began with a very fruitful partnership uh, with UT Southwestern, uh, Amit Singhal, there, the director of the liver tumor program. I want to give you some numbers to establish the context of what we're interested in, which is trying to get every person in the US to go in and do the regular cancer screening. Cancer treatment costs $150 billion a year. 2 million people are detected with cancer every year, right? Early stage detection can reduce mortality rate by 40%. So why is it then folks that only 4% of all of us go and do our regular sc cancer screening? As we listened and listened and listened to what Amit was saying, we realized that we cannot change what the healthcare does, but we can embellish how they're approaching this big issue. The healthcare sector is spending $130 million a year telling people to come and get screened for cancer and having a 4% success rate, right? So when we listened to how they approach this, we said there are three fundamental things that are causing a problem in how they're approaching this. One, everything they do in terms of outreach is treating every patient the same. And folks, we're all marketing scholars. We know you don't treat all customers the same. All patients are not created equal. And I thought, here's 60 years of research that we can bring to the fore to embellish what they're doing and fine tune their outreach so that every patient listens to the kind of message they need to, to go for their cancer screening. The second, where Amit and team and a lot of people in cancer outreach are struggling is linking their outreach efforts to lives and money. So in other words, we can actually proudly ask the question, can marketing save lives and money if we leverage our tradition of predictive and attribution models and link cancer outreach interventions to actual screening visits to actual lives saved? And the third thing that the healthcare community keeps facing, especially in the preventative cancer outreach area, is they write so many grants to actually treat cancer, the number of grants available for preventive outreach is a lot lesser. And for them to get these NIH grants, they need potent benefit cost simulations that actually show what the return on outreach is and how much it actually can pay off in terms of both lives and money. Now, what started off learning about these problems has led to a very fruitful program, including the paper that we published uh, you know, uh, this year. And I wanna talk a little bit about this on the next slide. What we had access to was 1800 patients that Amit and his team had been tracking for 18 months. And they, in the tradition of A-B testing, even though it's a one size fits all, at least ran a three condition scenario for 18 months. They said, we're not gonna to touch 600 of these people. They'll come in if they come in. We're going to provide a light touch to some of them where we just inform them that it's better you come in because early stage detection is better than late stage. And then they're going to double down on these last 600 and keep talking to them, have them come in. When over 15 years of work in preventive screening has simply demonstrated that there is a, you know, effect. People do come in. But what I think the community missed and where I think we are really excited to contribute is that this effect can be quantified for every patient when you take into account every patient's health records, their insurance records, their neighborhood characteristics, and on and on and on, you can identify a causal effect of preventative care outreach for every patient. What does that mean? Well, we in marketing know the moment you have personalized estimates of anything, you can offer personalized treatment opportunities and more importantly, get people to come in. So what we did in our last stage is we said, can we now take all of this together and organize people into people who are never gonna come in, people who may come in and people who will always come in. And when we then work the benefit and cost scenario of this analysis, we see that if you actually target the right intervention to the right person, you can get people to come in 20% increase in screening rates and 96% in cost savings for the healthcare system. So what, all I learned in, in, in all of this is simply that if we begin to double down on the things that we do very well in the marketing research community, we can begin to listen and understand their big problems, right? I know there's two more speakers after this, so I'm gonna to try to be brief, right? But I do wanna say that while learning, 
about all the problems that Amit and team faced in the preventative cancer space, right? Number of things came to the fore, which is that 95% of all research in healthcare marketing published in marketing simply looks at the patient and the physician. And there's an opportunity to go a lot more than that, as you can see on this graph, and understand the innards of the value chain.